This video is brought to you by Tempo. Stick around to the end for a special offer that they are making available through our channel. How's it hanging my Peloton freaks, iFit creeps, Tempo peeps, and all of the rest of you connected fitness geeks? I'm your host, Colin Jenkins. Welcome back to the Weekly Watt, where we cover the week's top connected fitness news stories and updates. There is a lot to cover this week. Most of it is focused around Peloton, given all of the news bashing them this week. And normally, normally I would enjoy making fun of Peloton as well, despite the fact that I really love them. But this week is different. This week, I have a more important job than making Peloton jokes because this week, the negative news cycle surrounding them has largely been created by bad reporting, incomplete information, and everything being compounded by a poor understanding of what all the information in these reports means. So here I am, the man who more frequently shits on Peloton's ridiculousness than anybody else, now having to become the one man having to back them the fuck up. And I really wanted to make fun of Peloton so badly this week. I mean, have you seen this picture of Dennis Morton from Peloton's apparel Instagram? It's screaming at me to say something, but I won't. As much as it pains me, Dennis is free from ridicule for at least one week. And so without further ado, let's get this dumpster fire rolling. First off, let's cover the reports on insider selling that have been making headlines this week. CNBC reported that Peloton executives have sold nearly $500 million worth of their stock before its big decline in 2021. Here's the problem with this report. For one, this is not new or really even that noteworthy at this point. All of this has been well known. It was information made public to everyone long ago, well in advance of the big stock drop in November. In fact, check out this clip from a video I made specifically about this last October before that stock drop. John Foley just recently sold off one third of what he holds in Peloton at a price close to $100, which is a little alarming considering it was at $168 at some point, and the fact that he's selling it off at 100 now might mean that he doesn't have confidence it's going to rise very much above that in the near future. And he wasn't the only person to sell a significant portion of their stocks in the recent months. The CEO sold a significant amount of her stocks, as well as several other high-ranking Peloton members. That's not to say that means the stock is going down, but it is something that you should know and possibly be concerned with. But for some reason, and it seems that CNBC must have an agenda to really nail down Peloton this week, they put out this non-news news out. And the second issue with it is this sort of selling has been going on with almost every single company. And it's not really seen as an issue because of the laws in place requiring executives to make their selling known in advance to the public with the information being sent out well in advance for everyone. The article even states clearly that, quote, virtually all of the sales were part of the 10B51 plans or pre-scheduled selling programs, which started back in 2020. This hit piece could have been written about almost any tech company over the past year. Well, except for Beachbody because their CEO, Carl, has not sold throughout their horrific first year in the stock market. Good for him, although legally I think he's not allowed to. Next up came the report that Peloton would be temporarily halting production of their bikes and treadmills. In the report, according to information that had leaked, quote, Peloton plans to pause bike production for two months from February to March, the documents show. It has already halted production of its more expensive Bike Plus in December and will do so until June. It won't manufacture its tread treadmill machine for six weeks beginning next month, and it doesn't anticipate producing any Tread Plus machines in fiscal 2022, according to the documents. Peloton has previously halted Tread Plus production after a safety recall last year. Now, let me explain some much needed context here. Do you remember this time last year? Peloton was getting backlash from not having a large enough inventory, which was causing delayed shipping times. That obviously weighed heavily on their minds and the decisions that they made this year when they increased their production capacity significantly with acquisitions of some of the largest fitness manufacturing plants in America. Did they make a mistake by spending way too much and creating way too big of an inventory, anticipating that growth would continue at the rate it did during the first year of the pandemic? For sure. Looking back, it was dumb as hell, but as customers, should we be upset that they produced more than what was needed to ensure that they could keep up with demand and not go back to three plus month waiting times? Hell no. 
We should be happy that Peloton was proactive about solving this problem that was leading customers to go to other places. And for some reason, probably because most people only read headlines, a lot of Peloton members seem to be under the impression that everybody needs to hurry up and order the equipment before they run out. No, no, just stop. That is not how this works. Peloton is halting production because they already have enough inventory for like the next 500 days. Trust me, if you want a bike or tread, you are going to be able to get one, no problem. Peloton will now need to figure out exactly what a post-pandemic world looks like in terms of inventory management, and once corrected, we'll be able to continue production at a level that makes sense. Now, the one big problem with sitting inventory, though, is cost. And Peloton has made a series of bad decisions one after another, especially when they permanently lower the cost of the Peloton bikes late last year, when that was not something they could support. And so now they are essentially having to raise prices back up by now charging for shipping and delivery. With increased competition being one of the primary reasons for slower than anticipated growth, an increase in prices almost guarantees that this is gonna to continue to become an even bigger issue for Peloton this year. And I have to mention this real quick because a lot of people seem to be associating the decrease in Peloton sales to a decrease in overall interest in connected fitness as a whole. But let me debunk that for you real quick. For one, Peloton has a membership churn rate of 0.79% which is unprecedented in the subscription category. Netflix has an extremely low churn rate as well, but even theirs is over three times higher at 2.4%. Number two is that Peloton sold $1.14 billion in revenue in just the past three months, which is exactly what they had predicted they would back in November. So nothing about their sales numbers should really be shocking anybody at this point. And three, almost all connected fitness companies are still growing at rates faster than they were pre-pandemic. Even Peloton is still growing. It's just that Peloton specifically spent way too much money to do so and now are hurting from some overconfidence and bad decisions they made over the previous year. Okay, so what should you make of all of this Peloton news and how is it going to affect you? Well, it really shouldn't unless you own Peloton stock or you are a Peloton employee, in which case, best of luck. But realistically, their service is still really solid and they still have a huge and growing fanatical membership base. The number of classes they are offering is unlikely to shrink given that the cost of paying instructors and producing classes is insignificant compared to almost any of their other costs. Now, if you want to buy a new Peloton tread or bike, it may end up costing you a few hundred dollars more if you wait until February, but that is about it. And that's not to say that this may affect you in the future. I mean, there's a 0% chance of Peloton going under and your equipment becoming worthless, but it is very likely that in order to get out of this mess, Peloton will need to be bought out by a bigger tech company. But that tech company with better management and a bigger budget will likely be able to improve the Peloton experience and possibly lower prices much easier than a broke Peloton can do on their own. So it is actually something that as a consumer may be very beneficial. Let me know in comments, by the way, who your best guess is for who will buy them out. My guess, my main meta man, Mark Zuckerberg, who can integrate Peloton into the metaverse, but let me know who you think it might be. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about some other connected fitness news. Starting with Peloton again, cause why the hell not? Peloton is bringing back Alc Toussaint for a second season of the Ride to Greatness. This is a series of competitions between two teams, Team Activate and Team Validate. To take part in the competition, you just need to add a hashtag Team Activate or Team Validate into your profile and jump into one of the three live competitions where the winner will be determined by the team with the highest average output. Now, I was on Team Activate who lost last season. I know, it was probably my fault, but I've kept the hashtag ever since and I'm ready to give it another try. Looking forward to jumping in with a hype man and you all to compete this February. Peloton was also awarded two new patents this week, one for their rotating touchscreen on the Bike Plus and the other for some biking cleat designs that would make it easier to walk around with your cleats off the bike which I always end up doing since there is always something I forget before starting a ride. Not sure what this means for other companies like iFit, 
who currently also have rotating screens on their bikes, but this certainly is a badly needed win for Peloton. Speaking of iFit, they are cutting back significantly on their live class schedule this year, now only offering live classes from 6 a.m. to noon Eastern Standard Time. Now this is a bummer of course, but it makes complete sense to me. And I know there are a lot of people upset about it, but I kind of feel like most of you are just sort of pretend upset because I've checked out quite a few live afternoon classes and I've never seen more than 10 to 20 people in them. So why would iFit keep them? Very few people use iFit for their live studio workouts when they have thousands of some of the best produced scenic workout programs available. The studio stuff and live classes outside of the races always seem like an afterthought and I hope this cut allows them to use their resources more effectively to continue creating great content. But maybe I'm being a bit too optimistic here because iFit's latest Commit to Fit Live 5K race sponsored by Dick's Sporting Goods was one of the worst productions they have ever put together. iFit, a company known for putting on so many cool scenic experiences and hosting live events like the newly added Chicago Marathon, really messed up here by hosting a 5K which was essentially just an ad the entire time for Dick's while you got the amazing experience of running around the Dick's parking lot for a 5K. As expected, this did not go over well with the iFit community and hopefully they will not do this again. Look, there's nothing wrong with the sponsorship, but there are good ways and there are bad ways to do it. And iFit, this was a bad way. Let me show you a good way. I wanna thank Tempo for sponsoring this video. And if you didn't know, Tempo is offering a special deal for viewers of this show to purchase the brand new Tempo Move for $25 off the already discounted rate of 395. Pretty sweet, right? The Tempo Move is my go-to connected fitness strength setup as it allows me to get in a great strength and mobility session without taking a lot of room in my apartment. The classes and the coaches are some of the best of any connected fitness platform and I am continually impressed by all of their new updates. They even updated their filtering system this week. And when Peloton is wondering why no one seems interested in the Peloton guide, when you see the Tempo Move, you can sort of understand why. $500 for a camera that can't even track your weights or reps seems like a bad idea when the Tempo Move, which does track your weights and reps, only costs $395 and also includes an entire Olympic adjustable dumbbell set as well as a great looking weight storage to keep it all organized. Seriously, a great value. Check them out in the link below. And that's it for this weekly Watt. Thank you all so much for being here. Love to throw this together at the end of the week and I'm happy to hear some of you enjoy it as well. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you again next week. Hopefully I'll finally be able to make fun of this picture of Dennis Morton.